Let love and light and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. Alice Bailey Number 3. Master Jesus, Bailey's Christ, and God The particular masters in which we are interested, both in their supernatural and dense physical plane manifestations, form a portion of the planetary hierarchy. This hierarchy will be discussed shortly. Our immediate concern, however, is with the identity of Bailey's master, Jesus. Bailey tells us that in 1922, quote, Master M, the Master KH, and the Master Jesus are interesting themselves closely with the work of unifying, as far as may be, as far as may be Eastern and Western thought, so that the great religions of the East, with the latter development of the Christian faith, in all its many branches may mutually benefit each other. Thus, eventually, it is hoped one great universal church may come into being." Unquote. Now, Master D.K. through Bailey tells us that Master Jesus, quote, is presently, 1922, living in a Syrian body and dwells in a certain part of the Holy Land. His pupils are frequently distinguished by fanaticism. He is tall and spare, with rather a long, thin face, black hair, pale complexion, and piercing blue eyes. He is well known in Bible history, coming before us first as Joshua, the son of Nun, appearing in the time of Ezra as Jeshua, taking the third initiation as related in the book of Zechariah as Joshua, and in the gospel story he is known for, for two great sacrifices that in which he handed over his body for the use of the Christ. As Apollonius of Tyana, he took the fifth initiation. The Mohammedan faith will be found linked to the Christian faith because it embodies the work of Master Jesus, as he overshadowed one of his senior disciples, a very advanced initiate Muhammad. Bailey claims that Master Jesus and the Jesus of the New Testament are one and the same. She writes, The Master Jesus, the inspirer and director of the Christian church everywhere. Further, this, cannot, this can be noted in the gospel story of the Master Jesus. Clearly, Bailey's intent is to correspond Master Jesus to Jesus Christ. For more direct evidence, Bailey states, quote, Christianity will be in a state of chaotic division and upheavals when this takes place. The Master Jesus will take certain initial steps toward reassuming control of his church. Unquote. Numerous other references can be, can be cited that immediately lead to the conclusion that Bailey would like us to believe that her Master Jesus, that appears in position 6 under the direction of the Venetian Master and controlled by C, that Mahakohan, Exhibit 4. Page 49 is the Jesus is the Christ Jesus. Observe also that on page 48, Master Jesus is connected to the Bodhisattva, the Christ, the world teacher. Please note that according to the diagram, Master Jesus is only a far away disciple of the Bailey's Christ, and as will be specifically shown, Master Jesus is not the Christ himself as the concept as scripturally defined. However, the most important and indeed absolute evidence where Bailey attempts to establish that Jesus Christ is the same as her Master Jesus is the entire book from Bethlehem to Calvary, The Initiations of Jesus, written without the aid, we are told, of Master D.K. This will be analyzed shortly. First, it is necessary to consider the planetary hierarchy and to identify Bailey's Christ and Bailey's Orthodox God. Notice that in Exhibit 4, Sanat Kumara, the Lord of the World, the Ancient of Days, the One Initiator, appears at the top of the spirit entities for the planetary hierarchy. Below Sanat Kumara is in influence is the Bodhisattva, the Christ. Further below we find Master Jesus. Once the identity of Bailey's Sanat Kumara is determined, then the identity of all the other spirit beings controlled by this entity will become clear. The original Sanat Kumara is the mind-born son of the Hindu god Brahma. Brahma is the creator god who was later joined by Vishnu and Shiva. And these form the Hindu trinity. 
Bailey equates the Christian concepts of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with the Hindu gods Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma, respectively. However, the Hindu trinity form distinctly different gods, and it is required that they be worshipped in idol form. The idol representation of Brahma has four heads and four arms. For example, 2, page 36, it is also important to this analysis that the masters, the great lords, in this case, the Manu Bodhisattva and Maha Kohan, as well as Sunat Kamara and his brothers, the three Kumaras, have achieved this purely spirit or semi-spirit positions through various occult initiations processes. In many cases, Bailey claims that this supernatural process is the counterpart of the ordinary secular evolutionary models for the physical universe. However, Bailey's process has a special variation. As an example, Bailey's description for Sanat Kumara states that, quote, the plan planetary logos, a spirit form of our earth scheme, one of the seven spirits before the throne, took physical incarnation and under the form of Sunat Kumara, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of the World, came down to this dense physical planet and has remained with us ever since. Owing to the extreme purity of his nature and the fact that he is, from the human standpoint, relatively sinless and hence incapable of response to aught on the dense physical plane, he was unable to take a dense physical body such as ours and has to function in his etheric body. Note, once we identify Sanat Kumara, the meaning of the term pure will also be very clear. Further, we learn that with the Sanat Kumara, there come a group of other highly evolved entities who represent his own individual karmic group and those who are the outcome of the triple nature of the planetary logos. In order to place these spirit entities in their proper linear perspective, please refer to Exhibit 5. This shows the evolution of the universe spiritually as it now appears. From the unknown, or as Bailey writes it, one about whom naught may be said, we have the seven spirits of the highest order, the cosmic logi. Under each cosmic logos are seven solar logi, and under each solar logos are seven heavenly men. The earth's heavenly man is Sunat Kumara. Bailey tells us that 18 million years ago, Sunat Kumara appeared on the scene. However, we are explicitly told that many of these spirit entities obtained their lofty positions through general evolutionary processes, and many started as human beings. At this point, we can now easily identify Sanat Kumara. First, Bailey employs many distinct synonyms for Sanat Kumara throughout her writings. He is claimed to be Sanat Kumara, the Ancient of Days, and the Lord of the World, as well as the Youth of Endless Summers. Bailey claims that Sanat Kumara is the entity that the Orthodox Christians called God. Also, the Ancient of Days, the One Initiator, is claimed to refer to the Old Testament God. The other synonyms Bailey uses are from Hinduism. Obviously, for a hundred different reasons, Sunat Kumara does not correspond to the Ancient of Days as described in the scriptures. Sunat Kumara does not exhibit the most outstanding attributes of the god Jehovah. The claim that Sunat Kumara is not the one and only one creator god, the god of everything, indeed Bailey's unknown, immediately eliminates Sunat Kumara as being the Old Testament Ancient of Days. Further, the claim that Sanat Kumara also corresponds to a major deity of an idolatrous religion is yet another of many, many reasons why this spirit being is not, but would like to be, the Old Testament God. The claim that he is the Orthodox God of Christianity falls for the same reasons among many, many others. This leaves us with the title that Bailey uses more than any other, the Lord of the World. This can be directly translated to be the scripturally described created spirit entity called the adversary, Satan, the devil. Hence, whenever Bailey and the followers of her theology use the term God in a Judeo-Christian context, they mean the scripturally defined spirit being called Satan. I also point out that the original name given to Bailey's publishing company was the Lucifer Publishing Company, who is a ruler of a planetary center. Exhibit 9. 
It is apparently true that in early rabbinic usages, Lord of the world or King of the world is synonymous with God. But in the scriptures, as they have been accepted for 2,000 years, and especially in the New Testament, Lord of the world is absolutely synonymous with the at term adversary or Satan. It is also interesting to point out that in all the scriptural quotations employed by Bailey, she apparently never quotes Luke 4, 6, and 7 relative to the world. Quote, and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for this is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I, whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Unquote. Now that the evidence indicates that Bailey Sanat Kumara is the adversary, the next step is to identify Bailey's Christ and determine whether he corresponds in any manner whatsoever to the Christ of the Scriptures. Note that the spirit entity, the Bodhisattva, is the department head of the Sanat Kumara's love wisdom aspect, and Bailey defines the Bodhisattva as the Lord Maitreya, who is known in the Occident as the Christ. The Bodhisattva is the head of all religions of the world. This is also stated in the World Goodwill webpage, where the Bailey's Christ is claimed to carry names as they have been given him in various religions, such as the Lord Maitreya, Krishna, the Imam Mahdi, and the Messiah. Since Bailey's Christ has not yet made an appearance in physical form, then Bailey's Christ is obviously not Jesus Christ. Bailey's Christ has attributes of idolatry and also comes about by reincarnation, since the Lord Maitreya is to be in a physical manifestation, the fifth reincarnation of Buddha. Hence, he is certainly not the Messiah of the Old Testament. Bailey actually states that her Christ is not the entity that differenti differentiates Christianity from all other world religions. Quote, the Tibetan has asked me to, clear, to make clear that when he is speaking of the Christ, he is referring to his official name as head of the hierarchy, the Christ. He does not belong to the Christian world any more than to the Buddhist, the Mohammedan, or any faith. There is no need for any man to join the Christian church in order to be affiliated with the Christ. Unquote. Of course, from a New Testament viewpoint, Bailey's Christ has attributes that directly contradict the attributes and statements made by Jesus and all of his apostles. First, and first Further, since she specifically denies that the New Testament Jesus is the Christ and the Master Jesus is but a disciple of the true Christ, then she and any individual who follows this aspect of her theology in any manner whatsoever is an antichrist. Since it is rather obvious that Sanat Kumara is the adversary, then Bailey would have done under the guise of love and wisdom what such great Satanists as Aleister Crowley did not attempt to do. Since masters are produced by the occult process of overshadowing, and Bailey claims that the Master Jesus established the Christian Church, then Bailey may have committed the very serious biblical sin of implying that Jesus the Nazarene was indwelt by a de demon or satanic spirit. Due to the seriousness of this scriptural sin, more direct evidence needs to be developed. For more evidence relative to the Bailey's Christ, see section 7. We'll get to that. The Solar Angels and Humanity The Bailey category of Diva or Angels has many subdivisions, and these subdivisions carry many names, such as the Greater or the Lesser Builders. The Greater Builders are categorized, categorized as the Solar Petrus, Hindu, semi-divine, deceased forefather. Agnishvadas, then on page 682 of reference 2, that Bailey has expanded Helena Blavatsky's terminology somewhat to include Solar Petrus as a solar angel. Apparently, Blavatsky considers Petrus only to be lunar, or a lower aspect. It is much more important, however, to consider Blavatsky's terminology that appears in the footnote on page 614 of reference 2. Blavatsky calls solar angels solar gods. They give humankind two principles, the lower mind and higher mind. Then on page 950 of reference 2, Bailey gives us the exact description for the solar angels, i.e. solar gods. 
as stated in the secret doctrine of Blavatsky. They are the fallen angels. Further, they are the serpents of wisdom, as well as having a nature of knowledge and love. Once again, observe that the ruler of the humanity department of the planetary hierarchy is Lucifer. For what purposes are the fallen angels employed? We are told that, quote, the work of the Agnishvada's fallen angels is to unite the higher three principles, Atma, Buddhi, and Manas, and the lower three, and thus become in very, in very truth the middle principle in man. They give man the higher mind, and thus they work directly upon human, a human being's brain. Bailey relates exactly how they benefit humanity. Quote, As the solar gods descend ever nearer to the physical plane and their descent assume a steadily increasing control of the lunar nature or lower mind, the thoughts and desires of men are consequently purified and refined. The solar angels blaze forth in all their glory. Unquote. Note that Bailey often uses the term man or men to mean mankind, male or female. These fallen angels yield the ego and thereby redeem humanity and endow him with human affections and aspirations. Of course, the fallen angels, as scripturally defined, are demonic spirits that can only endow mankind with scripturally defined evil. Are the fallen angels related to Sanat Kumara? Bailey claims that the fallen angels in the form of the greater builders are related to a specific Christian concept. From the Christian standpoint, the greater builders are the Holy Spirit, says Alice Bailey. From a scriptural viewpoint, this may be the most evil correspondence an individual can make, equating the Holy Spirit with demonic spirit beings. But, as will be discussed in another internet paper, this exceptional evil correspondence is exactly what is being done today with the psychic community. In her analogy to electricity, Bailey states that the greater builders are the positive aspects relative to the entities called the Brothers of Light. Bailey states that the Brothers of Light cooperate with the positive aspect in and of all forms the building divas of evolutionary intent, in order to bring about the purposes of the heavenly man. Thus translating the code words, one has that demonic spirit beings work for Sunat Kumara, Satan, and they perform Sunat Kumara's mental overshadowing of mankind. Mental overshadowing of mankind. I'm repeating myself. These and hundreds of other pieces of direct evidence lead only to one conclusion. Bailey's theology is controlled completely by all of the satanic concepts described within the scriptures. Bailey, along with all of the followers of this theology, have an immediate God, which is the adversary. Bailey's telepathic control, as well as the entities that control the followers of this theology, are demons. Bailey and all of the followers of this theology may have committed the most grievous of scriptural sins if they have actually used Holy Spirit procedures for their work. Then they have blasphemed the Holy Ghost, but most certainly they have used satanic methods and controls for their work as well as claiming that Jesus Christ is a demon-controlled individual. Although Bailey attempts to hide the true identity of her Christ, the identity is now rather obvious. In the occult diagram of Exhibit 4, as with all such diagrams, the diagrammatically nearest non-Kumara entity to S, Sanat so Kumara, is always the most significant. Notice that this entity is B, Bailey's Christ. If the three entities had equal weight, they should be grouped along an arc of a circle. The scriptures teach that the closest entity to the adversary and the entity that has not formally appeared yet in its full earthly form is the Antichrist of Revelations. There is no doubt that the true identity of Bailey's Christ is not as she has described him, but rather he is the Antichrist. Many individuals who do not believe that such spirit forms exist in objective reality would pass off Bailey's claim as harmless. 
if the secular aspects of her theology are inconsistent with her supernatural concepts. Shortly, the material aspects of Bailey's New World Order will be investigated and it will be determined whether or not her secularized theology is truly harmless. Before this investigation, let us see exactly how devious and how much a liar Alice A. Bailey really was. Now that certain, but not all, Bailey code words have been identified, then, in order not to mar Bailey's ingenious linguistic techniques, within the Bailey quotations, these code words or phrases are indicated only by the parentheses notation. Not really put parentheses, I forget what those are called. The actual scriptural meanings for these code words will then be given at the end of many of the long quotations. Could it be Satan? Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus! The name of Jesus! <laughs>